Hey guys, so I just want to kind of go over with a little bit with you guys about what we're doing the last um, couple weeks here in geometry. If you read Mr. Engelbretson's email, we only have essentially like three class periods left of new learning. And then the last week um, is going to be like an intervention week. So this will be a time to do makeup work. Um, it'll be a time to do retakes. Now, if you don't have to do those things, you're essentially going to be done next week, Wednesday or Thursday, depending on which day you guys have me. So um, I'm not teaching anything new after this date. So um, that means that we've really finished our last test. So um, with these three days, since we're not technically going to test on it, what I chose to do is kind of do some things that would be helpful for the ACT. So um, we're doing parts of chapter 12. So everything we're gonna be doing the next few days isn't gonna be necessary uh, for a test for my class, but it will be necessary for when you guys take the ACT next year or the year after. So um, just, I'm, I'm trying to like kind of pinpoint what would be most helpful for you guys. So this is what I chose um, based off of um, just kind of what we can fit into the end of the year. Not ideal, but this is the best we can do. But again, continue to work on corrections or retakes. I know some of you guys have already contacted me about retakes. Um, I will get you guys um, your old test. You can do a new version or do corrections and then um, do a new version of the test. So um, that's our last like week or so here, um, which is kind of crazy, but we'll do our best to get in um, good work, but at the same time, not overload you either. So what we're working on today is um, section 12.2. And again, I'm skipping around a little bit just because of the fact that we only have like three class periods left. So um, we're going to talk about surface area of uh, prisms and cylinders today. Um, and that's in um, chapter 12. I skipped over the first section. Um, if you're interested in that and want to know what we, it has a little bit more in vocab and stuff like that. Um, but I want to talk to you about surface area because if you look up um, geometry on the, ACT, it's definitely something that um, is kind of highlighted or mentioned. So I don't want to miss that section for you. So um, we're talking about a prism and that sounds like something really, really exciting. Like we're going to be like um, doing some like um, magic or something with a prism. Um, really a prism is something you see all the time. So I actually took this Tylenol box here, not because you guys give me headaches, but because it's a nice little box to cut up and it was one I had still intact. So what I did with this is this is considered a prism. So what a prism is, is like basically a three dimensional shape, but it has, um, they call it a polyhedron. So um, for that prism, it has two congruent faces. So I'm gonna write down kind of what we know about a prism. So two congruent faces. And hopefully faces is a word you're comfortable with. It's just like the edge of the shape. Two congruent faces, and they're also parallel to each other. So this is not an example of something that, um, I don't know, there's like kind of some crazy buildings or like kind of a, it's not like a sloped roof. So like picture in your house um, would not be an example of a prism unless you have a flat roof. So a prism has two congruent faces. Um, so the top and the bottom are two congruent faces in this case that I would work with. Now you could probably argue some of the other ones are faces, but I'm gonna stick with the top and the bottom here. The other faces are called the lateral faces and that's all the faces going around the outside. So those are the lateral faces. Those are parallelograms that connect to the um, base. Now, the faces on the top and bottom, we're gonna talk about prisms and cylinders. These could either be triangles, they could be, um, so these could be rectangles squares, triangles. Now we will talk about specific um, ones if they're circles, they're called a cylinder. Um, so the prism, they could be trapezoids, 
They could be basically any kind of shape on the top and the bottom, but then the sides, the lateral faces, have to be parallelograms. So that's important, and a rectangle is a parallelogram, so that's what this is in this case. Now, why I cut it up this way is because when I unfold it, this is called a net. And if I'm trying to talk about a surface area and I fold this back up, this is what would cover the box. Like this is how I'd cover the box that's considered the surface area. So if I cut this apart and unfolded it, that's called its net. And I would find all the areas of these and then add them together. So. Um, those are a couple other vocab words you'll see them talk about. So net is if we unfolded. And there's no overlapping pieces with a net. So like um, if I just took the box the way it was, like if I ripped it apart and had to cut it up, it probably wouldn't exactly be the net, but this one works well. Now, if I wanted to find the surface area of a shape like this, I'm gonna do our first example here. So if I ask you to find the surface area, of a rectangular prison, prism, with height of three centimeters, length of six centimeters, and width of eight centimeters. So we're gonna find the surface area. So I'm gonna show you that first without a formula, just show you that we can do this without a formula. And then I'll show you that there is a formula you can use as well, sorry. So in this case, I'm gonna draw this out. So um, if it's a rectangular prism, I'm gonna kind of try to draw kind of what we have going on here. Height of three centimeters, so it's pretty short. The length of six centimeters and a width of eight. So I'm gonna go, this is eight, this is three, and then going back is six. Now, if you're like, oh my gosh, my drawing is bad, my drawing's not great here or there, but you get the idea. It's okay, don't let yourself get all bent out of shape about this. I'm not expecting you guys draw these perfectly. But this is kind of the idea, that it's eight centimeters wide, six centimeters long, three centimeters high. Now, if I was trying to find the surface area of that, I could do all these different little pieces, kind of like if I was cutting it up into a net. So they realize that there's this top piece up here and the bottom piece would be the same. So it's kind of like picturing this being a three-dimensional shape. So there would be the surface area, if I'm trying to find that, I'm trying to find all the different little areas. So the top and the bottom are both gonna be the same. It's gonna be six by eight. So, and it should be a rectangle. I draw it through that way because of perspective, but there's two of those. So it's six times eight and then times two. So 48 times two, so 96. Then um, the front and the back. The front is eight by three. We're finding the area of that, but there's the front and the back. So there's two of those again, eight by three 